Are you, are you watching this? It's gone massive, you know. That's two balls, huge. Wow. That's possibly the longest I've ever come here. Consistently yeah. on camera. Maybe the longest ball I've ever had on camera. The stealth driver has been, well there's been a huge amount of noise about this driver and just how good it is. And I ain't going to tell you any difference in this video. This driver is fantastic. I've had some unreal performance with it. Whether you like the look of it or not, I still think this is going to be an incredibly big seller of 2022. But there is one big problem. Now the problem isn't with the stealth driver itself. The three shots you see me hit at the beginning of this video were with another driver and unfortunately that's TaylorMade's biggest problem this year because the other thing that's in this bag is the Callaway Rogue Max driver and I'm telling you now this is going to cause some major problems for TaylorMade in terms of their sales because I think this thing is another massive surprise package for 2022 and I'm going to show you in this video just why I think this is so good and a big problem for TaylorMade. Right, so the way I see it, there are five reasons as to why this is a big problem in terms of the sales of TaylorMade Stealth drivers. I'm going to go through each of those one by one. And we'll start off with number five. Right, so number five and number four are pretty much the same thing really, but the first one is the way that this driver looks. And the reason it's a problem is it's completely different than the way the Stealth looks. I like that because it's a massive deciding or a contributing factor in a choice making decision when a lot of drivers have looked very similar in years gone by this is very very different and i think callaway have done a fantastic job in the way this thing looks at a dress it's that uh, dull matte crown it sort of faded out with that checkered flag look there's a slight hint of the coloring at the back end slightly different in its shape and its profile but i think they've done a superb job in the way this thing looks at a dress. And I said we do five and four at the same time. And number four is the sound of this driver. I have been joking I can't hit a bad shot with this thing and that's absolutely right down the middle again. But the sound is completely different as well. And I think it'll appeal to one or the other. The Stealth is very much a sort of quite a loud sounding driver. I think what the Rogue has done really, really well is making it a little bit more softer, more muted, almost a bit more responsive in terms of back into the hands. You certainly know exactly where you've hit it on the club face. So five and four are the fact that they've made a really good looking driver in terms of Rogue and they've made a really good sounding driver in terms of Rogue. Right, so problem number three in the list and that is the price tag because the Callaway Rogue is coming in at 479 in terms of an RRP. I reckon it'll probably retail around 449. So there's an advantage there in terms of a cost saving. So that's another problem that it might pose to the sales of the TaylorMade Stealth. But the biggest problem in terms of number one and two are all about performance. Not only in terms of performance off the club face in terms of ball speed and carry distances, which are quite phenomenal, let me tell you. And I will show you that very, very soon. But the other thing is dispersion, which is another key factor that Rogue does incredibly well. Next stage was for me to hit golf balls, which you'll see very, very shortly. And um, this is quite surprising. This is without doubt, probably the best performance in terms of a driver in my hands on a video ever. That's how good it is. We're in doubt in track, man, like you will, and question the distances and the yardage of carry here. We would question whether or not the course that I'd set up in terms of the simulator was perhaps something to do with altitude and track man's very, very clever, maybe too clever at times, and was throwing in some numbers that, uh, well, like I said, made a bit of hard reading. So the next set of clips you'll see, or the second group, which will be clearly marked, were from Adair Manor, which is a golf course in Ireland, which is, again, in terms of altitude is exactly what I'd be hitting out at here. I'm explaining that because you are gonna question just how far this ball has gone, like I did.
Some other one. Two fifty-eight. Wow. This is just like nothing else I've ever hit. So on. Now already you have plenty of questions to ask and you're already questioning what you've seen on screen like I did too because some of that um, carry distance in terms of the simulator was quite phenomenal and as I say we switched up from where we started and I'm not even sure what course we were on onto a dare manner but even there we were getting some phenomenal carry distances. The one thing I will say is that it tends to be a slight difference between simulator data and when you're just recording what we call non-simulated data, which is what I generally throw up on screen. So if anyone's got a problem with what they've seen in terms of carry distances and they're questioning it, I'm okay with that. But what we'll do now is I'll throw up the data like we record every single week, not forgetting exactly the same settings. And I'm explaining this in advance because yet again, there's gonna be some phenomenal numbers in terms of performance that you're gonna see right now. So numbers on screen for you now. The clubhead speed is the real weird one. We did it in the initial head-to-head -head when we did stealth versus rogue. The clubhead speed is recording quite low for rogue. I don't really understand why it's doing that, but I would suggest it's probably two or three mile an hour different than what it actually should be. And it's certainly two or three mile an hour different than what I normally record in terms of um, clubhead speed. Anyway, ball speed on average 148. But what you've got to look at is the average ball speed throughout all of those shots that we've hit. It was pretty phenomenal, really, really high. And in some cases, yes, you will question those 152, 150 and 151 ball speeds in relation to the club head speeds. Lots of you will point out the smash factor. Do what you will with it. I'm recording data straight out of TrackMan as I do every other week. These are the numbers that I got today. Make of it what you will. Carry distances, like I said, incredibly consistent again. 244 on average. Longest ball, what is it, 250 just over. We had a 248 ball in there as well. They're, for me, phenomenal numbers. You then look at that launch of 13.3, peak height of 84, and a spin number of 2170. I'd go as far as to say this, those set of numbers are pretty much optimum, perhaps more than optimum in some cases, in every single aspect in terms of launch angle, in terms of spin rate, carry distances, ball speed, everything out of there that we've just seen is without question the best performance that I've achieved with a driver um, ever. That's how good this was. Now the beginning of the thing I said Telemade has one big problem. Well they do have a big problem because they've got a massive competitor on their hands in the Rogue. But I think the problem that they've got is really the benefit what you've got in terms of a consumer. Because right now, you've got without doubt, and I said it in their first head-to-head -head video, you've got some incredible uh, products available to choose from. And two of the very best drivers, in my opinion, that have been produced ever. Like I said, this isn't about knocking the Stealth. The Stealth has been phenomenal in the performance that I've tried it in the last sort of six weeks or so. Cannot fault it, and much the same, and just edging it would be the performance of the Rogue, certainly on today's performance. But phenomenal in terms of what they've done. And uh, like I said, lots of people will pick fault in that. Loads of people will critique the marketing stories and all the rest of it. I'm okay with that. Do with it what you will. That's what we've seen today. I want to know your feedback. What are you thinking? What are you thinking of the Rogue and how much of a problem do you think it causes for that tailor-made stealth sales this year? Where are you going and what are you going to try? And I really can't wait for these to get out into retail and for you to get the opportunity to try them and see if you're finding the benefits in terms of performance that I have seen. Because like I said, unreal.
uh, performance. I, I can't get over it. I'm, I'm shocked in many ways just to how good that has performed today. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Comments down below. Give me your feedback. I uh, love to read your thoughts uh, either way. Right, I'm off. See you soon.